Hey, today we're gonna to use multiple exposures to remove a bunch of people from a scene. I'll show you how to do it on today's episode of Ask David Bergman. Hey everybody, welcome back. Here I am as always answering your photography questions on Ask David Bergman. Of course, I'm David Bergman. As always, right here on Adorama TV. Don't forget to go to askdavidbergman.com. You can submit your own photo questions there. I'm sure you've got questions. Bring them on, I'll do my best to answer as many as possible right here on future episodes. Today, I've got a question submitted by Marcel M. And he asks, is it possible to use multiple exposures to remove tourists from a scene? Ooh, good question. You know, right now it's uh, June of 2020. We're all pretty much locked at home. There's not a lot of tourist things going on right now, not a lot of travel, but I'm hopeful that we will be out traveling again soon. Maybe you're watching this in the future and this is a non-issue, but if you wanna make a picture where you're in a very busy scene and there's a lot of people, but you wanna have just a picture of say the Eiffel Tower or something like that, there is a way to do it. It's kind of a Photoshop trick, but I'm gonna talk a little bit about the photography part when you're shooting, and then I'm gonna show you how to do do it in post-processing. So the first thing is about making your pictures. What you're gonna do is make multiple exposures of the same scene to give yourself the best quality and the easiest um, uh, the easiest work in post-processing, you wanna make the best possible images to begin with. So ideally, you're locking the camera down physically. Um, I'm a Manfrotto fan. I've got a, a, a nice big Manfrotto tripod with a ball head on the top. You could also use a little tiny travel tripod if you can put it on something high enough where you can get it at the right angle. There are uh, those tripods you can wrap around trees and things like that. Or even, I also have a uh, platypod floor plate that I use for my remote cameras when I'm shooting concerts. And you can put a ball head on that and you can put cameras on there. The, the bottom line is you wanna have your camera as stable as possible. Now, it will work if you're hand holding, but it's just a little more processing power that it's gonna to take to get that done and you're gonna to have to warp the images a little bit to make them look right. So ideally, you're gonna be locked down in place. The other thing is you want your exposures to be consistent. You want to shoot manual exposure. You want every image to be the same brightness, right? If your images are all over the place in brightness or darkness, then it's never gonna really look right. You want consistent images throughout. Lastly, autofocus, you wanna turn off autofocus and shoot manual focus because the same thing, if that focus is hunting and changing from the foreground to the background, it's never gonna really look right when you combine those. So ideally when you're out, you wanna shoot those pictures, you wanna make as many pictures as you possibly can. The key is you wanna have enough pictures where at least some of the background is exposed in every single frame. You wanna have, you wanna be able to see the background at least once in every single frame. Even though people are moving around back and forth, as long as you can see every spot of the background in at least one frame, you're gonna be good. So I would say anywhere from 10 to 15, maybe even 20 images if there are a lot of people, just shoot away and you can always sort of deal with it later. So. Once you have those images, now what I did to demonstrate this is obviously I'm not going to any really tourist heavy places right now, but what I did was I went outside, the local kids in the neighborhood were out playing. We had a super fun time out there. The parents were there, of course. I got permission from everybody to photograph their kids. I would never do that for something like this without asking. Everybody was really great. We were having a good time and the kids were basically running around back and forth. So first thing I did was load those raw files into Capture One, which is what I used to do all my raw conversions and, and I, I took those and I did a the same, I applied the same processing to each frame. So I brightened them up a little bit. Here's an example. Uh, here's one frame. I brightened it up a little bit. You can sort of see my settings. I had to actually, it was getting dark, so I was underexposed a little bit. Brightened my exposure, set the white balance, put a little bit of vignette, and basically applied that to every frame in this sequence. So they are, again, exactly the same because the original Exposure was the same, even the adjustment in Capture One or Photoshop or Lightroom or whatever it is you're using will be exactly the same. The key is, again, consistency. You want them to be the same. So then you can see those 10 images here. This is what it looks like. I had those kids running around. They were having a, a just a blast. Um, they didn't care what I was doing or why I was doing it. But um, you can see the, the background isn't moving, but in every frame, the kids are somewhere different. So this is very similar to what you might be dealing with if you're in an outdoor or indoor and outdoor, it doesn't matter, where there are a lot of people moving around. You just want consistency. So once I have those 10 frames uh, exported, then I'm gonna go into Photoshop. 
So now I know I'm using CS6, don't give me a hard time about that, but this works in CS6 Extended and it also works in, of course, the newest Photoshop CC. Now the thing is what you wanna do is layer those 10 images up together and the, there are a couple ways to do it. The, uh, let me show you sort of the more manual way first. Well, the most manual way is actually copy and paste them each into new layers individually. That's a huge pain. There's no reason to do that. You can come right here into scripts and do load files into stack. And then all you have to do is select those 10 images, right? Or however many you have. And uh, the other, there's a couple of settings here that are pretty important for this uh, scenario. First of all, attempt to align source images. Yes, we want to do that. Even though I was on a tripod, there might be minuscule movements from wind or something. Hopefully not. But if, of course, if you're not on a tripod or the camera's moved at all, you definitely want to do that. So the Photoshop will align them. And then create smart objects after loading layers. Yes, you need to be in smart objects to make this work. Actually, I'm going to turn that off and we'll do it manually just so you can see how that works. So right now, all it's going to do is layer those 10 images up and then align them. So now that you can see that that's done, we've got our 10 images here and I didn't select that smart object selection. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm manually gonna select those 10 images, come up here into my uh, settings here and I'm gonna do convert to smart object. And it's gonna take those 10 images and create one single smart object. Now, of course, we're only seeing the top image here um, visually, but all 10 images are still in there. It's now a single smart object. We could have saved that extra step by just selecting convert to smart object in our layer stack selection, but um, I just wanted to show you how that works. Then the key here is you wanna go to layer, smart objects, and then stack mode. Stack mode is where the magic happens. And the one we're gonna select is median. And what median is gonna do is take those 10 images and select the parts of it that are the same, the parts of those 10 images that are the same, and only keep that and not keep anything else. So where the kids were moving around, it's all gonna be gone, and all we're gonna have left is the house, the trees, uh, excuse me, the grass, anything else that's in there that's not moving around. And boom, there you go. You can see the kids are gone. Um, we have a perfect image here uh, with just our background, the house, the grass, and absolutely nothing else. So that was the super easy way to do it. Now, there is another way to do it that's almost even easier. It just saves a few steps here. Let's go back to uh, a new file here, and we're gonna go in, in the newer, in CS6 Extended as well as CC, Photoshop CC, there's a new thing here in scripts called statistics. And basically this combines all of those steps in one. We're gonna choose our stack mode as median. We're gonna pick our files back again, those 10 images, and we're gonna do an attempt to automatically align. You don't even have to do the smart object step because it's gonna do all of that for us. So basically, this using statistics and median, it's gonna do everything we just did manually all in one nice step. And boom, you can see, there it is, nice and easy, very quickly done. Now, like I said, with Photoshop, there are multiple ways to do anything. You could manually uh, put these on top of each other, mask out the things you wanna mask out, get rid of certain people and not others. It really is a very powerful program that allows you to do things lots of ways. But the quick and simple, easy way to do it is just like that. So Marcel, hope that answers your question. Yes, it is certainly possible and also very easy to do. Thanks so much for asking that. Listen, remember, go to AskDavidBergman.com, bring on your own photo questions. I'll do my best to answer them on a future show. Also, subscribe to Adorama TV, subscribe, like, comment down below. Uh, I'll be in the comments answering uh, your comments, responding back to you. So please engage with us there. Make sure you like and subscribe as well. Thanks so much for joining me. Ask David Bergman's back here every Monday, 10 a.m. Eastern. I'll see you back here next time on Ask David Bergman.